So I think that understandings of uh, deterrence developed during the Cold War have relevance in Asia and South Asia today in some ways, but in other ways they are not entirely applicable. So I think some of the ways that they are, are relevant today, aside from you know, your standard theories of nuclear deterrence goes to the way that you can apply some of these ideas of deterrence developed during the Cold War about uh, nuclear weapons and the importance of mutual vulnerability to um, uh, two countries not wanting to actually use those weapons can also apply to some of the new technologies that countries in Asia are developing. So, uh, for example, space weapons, uh, strategic uh, cyber attacks in another country's homeland critical infrastructure also carry these ideas of mutual vulnerability. So I think not only do some of these understandings um, uh, continue to apply, but they also can be expanded to new, uh, new areas too. But I do think there are some limitations to uh, the applicability of Cold War understandings of deterrence in South Asia for a couple of reasons. For things like geography, for differences in the kind of scope and sophistication of uh, particularly nuclear arsenals, uh, the stakes of the conflict in the multipolar kind of area. So uh, to put a bit of um, context on those answers, Firstly, I think that there were specific aspects of the Cold War that had to do with European geography that meant that, you know, distinguishing between tactical uh, and strategic nuclear weapons was meaningful on the basis of their, their range. Uh, and this is something that's much more difficult to sort of split up weapons in this way in, uh, uh, for example, South Asia, where the distances between India and Pakistan are much, much closer than, for example, the US and uh, Soviet homelands. Uh, in addition, a lot of the nuclear arsenals that are present in China, in Pakistan and India simply don't have the sophistication uh, and size that the US and Soviet arsenals did. So, you know, when countries think about or when we talk about, uh, you know, use or lose pressures uh, from a country having a damage limitation, uh, nuclear capability. Uh, that's the kind of thing um, that uh, might not apply in a South Asian or in an East Asian context because um, India, Pakistan and China simply don't have big or sophisticated enough nuclear arsenals to have uh, that kind of a capability and therefore to be subject to that kind of uh, pressure in a crisis. Um, Two other things just to note really quickly uh, have to do with nuclear multipolarity. So you tend to see knock on from different nuclear relationships uh, currently in South Asia that you didn't in the Cold War. So what happens in the US-Russia relationship affects what happens in the US-China relationship, which affects what happens in the uh, China um, India relationship and then knocks on to the India-Pakistan relationship. So that sort of chain of interdependence of uh, nuclear relationships also wasn't present and is something that's less, uh, less accounted for.